We begin with a story of questionable teenage judgment, the kind parents have been losing sleep over since long before the invention of the keg party. But this one has shattered lives and divided an all-American town in a most dramatic and public way. It involves two high school football standouts, a 16-year-old girl from across the river, copious amounts of alcohol, and accusations of sexual assault, all swirled together in a social media culture where reputations can go viral in a blink. After day two of this trial in Steubenville, Ohio, ABC's Elizabeth Vargas has the latest details. We want justice! It is a high-profile case that has turned the small, close-knit town of Steubenville, Ohio, upside down. Shame on you! And serves as a cautionary tale for teenagers living in today's digital world. She is so ready right now. <laughs> Two high school football standouts are charged with sexually assaulting an intoxicated 16-year-old girl over the course of a long night last August. And after six months, the case is now in court. The question, was the girl too drunk to consent to sex? The defendant was substantially impaired, so she could not resist. She could not resist. Prosecutor Marianne Hemeter laid out her case. You will hear from a lot of teenagers. And I imagine that portions of this testimony won't be easy to hear, but at the end of the day, the state will prove the counts that they are charged with. But beyond the court, the case has been playing out ferociously on social media since the night in question. The two defendants, Malik Richmond, 16, and Trent Mays, 17, apparently had already been prosecuted, defended, and judged in blog posts and YouTube videos on Facebook and on Twitter. My job is to stay focused on the evidence and, and not try this case in the social media. The only thing that we want to do is determine what the facts are, what the truth is. One cell phone photo circulating from the night sparked outrage. The two defendants carrying the alleged victim by her arms and legs. She appears unconscious. You have an alleged victim who doesn't remember what happened that night. So this picture becomes absolutely crucial for prosecutors who are trying to prove that she was substantially impaired such that she couldn't consent. Malik Richmond, who maintains his innocence, spoke to us in an ABC News exclusive. Malik says the 16-year-old girl was awake and a willing participant in the photo that was a joke. So you just grabbed her and that was a, a fun picture that you took? Well, at, after that, I, I didn't think it was fun, but at first, at, during that moment, In the yes, moment? Yes. It was a joke picture? Yes, ma'am. So you weren't carrying her out? No. Walter Madison is Malik Richmond's attorney. The photo is what it is. The photo doesn't suggest that a person is substantially impaired. It just suggests that a person is being you carried. You don't think that looks like substantial impairment? We don't care what it looks like. We know that after the photo was taken, she exhibited the ability to make decisions. We have witnesses that will, that will state that are going to testify that that photograph was in fact staged. The boy's lawyers will try to make the case that the alleged victim was not incapacitated and that she was alert enough to remember the passcode on her phone later that night, even though witnesses say she was stumbling and vomiting. So you weren't thinking that a girl who keeps repeatedly throwing up was pretty drunk? No, because it's natural. You see that a lot? Yeah. At parties? Not not just at parties. You see it everywhere. You can see that at a football game. You can see that at a concert. People throwing up because they've yeah. had too much to drink? You can see that anywhere. Throughout the night at several different parties, Ohio teenagers tweeted and texted about the drunk girl. Within a week, the two football players were arrested and charged with rape for penetrating her with their fingers. Big news in a town devoted to big red football. You knew that people in town were going to be talking. Yes. This was going to be this a big deal This was going to be town. a huge deal there. It's two big red football players. Alexandria Goddard is a crime blogger who posted all the messages and all the names of the boys involved, even those who had not been charged with any criminal wrongdoing. And so I started looking at social media. I established who was on the team and started going through names, found their Twitter accounts, and you know, I was up all night, but within two hours, I had names and a basic idea of what was going on that night. And it was all on Twitter. 
The tweets appear to reference a sexual assault. One read, Song of the Night is definitely Rape Me by Nirvana. Another, Rest in peace to the person that died. You went out doing it big. She's deader than a doornail. Oh and even more shocking, a cell phone video of a boy laughing about an alleged assault is posted online by the group Anonymous. She is so great right now. <laughs> yes, yeah, the world is watching. Protesters descended on the small steel town, wearing masks, demanding more boys be arrested and charged. Many of those protesters returned today on day two of the trial. Despite their pressure, just two football players stand accused. Several other athletes will take the stand against them, as will the alleged victim herself, even though she says she has no memory of that night. I didn't rape anybody. I didn't witness a rape going on. And if I would have thought that somebody was being raped or anything like that, I would have stopped it. The boys are being tried in juvenile court by a judge. The trial is expected to last nearly a week. For Nightline, I'm Elizabeth Vargas in New York.